um, yeah, I'm looking at, I'm in talks with two different owners of, of properties on Maui. They're both chunks of vacant land and they both have like title issues. So parents who have passed away in like between like the seventies and the, in the late nineties and the deeds never got properly transferred or handed down. Mm-hmm. So it would have to go through what I expect to be like a probate process, but I've never actually gone, you know, we've solved some other title issues in the past. They're all pretty minor. We've paid some people off in order to get them to sign signatures, but never gone through a full blown probate, especially in Hawaii. So I'm trying to figure out if anybody has any recommendations or experience, cost, timeline, you know, any and everything. I used to have a, a, a probate attorney that used to help me with it, but he, like, uh, I never actually had to do it myself. So, um, he's actually not practicing anymore. He's retired. Um, I okay. don't know any, does anybody know any, uh, probate attorneys? If so, maybe if you can drop it in the chat, um, I can reach out to a couple of guys for you, Alex. Um, I gotta make sure I have your contact. One second. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I've, that's what I would, I would be just want to go through the proper process. Um, oh, here you go. Sounds like Jody has somebody. Oh, no. um, yeah. That would be, so I'd use a probate attorney. You know, I don't want to, I have enough other stuff going on in my business that I don't need to get into right. doing that myself, but trying to solve the problem is definitely, there's some money to be made in it. Um, one of them has nine heirs on it of which I think multiple are willing to sell. And then the other one, is a split ownership between six different individuals and then i'm talking to one of the one of the four heirs of one of the six individuals so they get kind of complicated yeah. but there's like also a need for them to sell there's years of back taxes on the thing there's you know there's there's room in the deal yeah well man i stopped chasing those that's how you get deals right like uh many people they stop at the the paper walls and they don't go forward when uh, really it's the guys that are willing to do the digging uh, and contact these owners. So total, there's got to be like over 10 then people that have interest in this property or. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And this is, and we're talking two different properties here Two. So yes. yeah, it's two different ones. And it's, I mean, from, this is like um, a lot of my best deals come from the ones that like have the hair on them have like mm-hmm. these like title issues or there's one where we like paid like an ex-girlfriend from 1980, $4,000 in order to sign a quick claim deed. Like we've done these kind of like funky deals before yeah. um, because the numbers make sense on them. So you, can, you can pick them up really good, but the probate thing is a little bit new for me. I'm trying to figure out what that proper process is. Yeah. I would hire an attorney. Um, Maybe if you can drop your contact, uh, I thought I had your contact, Alex, but I don't. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, actually, you know, I see Kevin just came on too. And now, Kevin, I don't know if you can um, talk, but Alex here has been um, looking for, or he needs like a probate attorney going through probate. Do you have, do you know anybody? Kevin's been investing a long time. <laughs> um. I know a lot of probate attorneys, but I'm not sure. I never used one before. But um, yeah, you can give me a call, I guess. Yeah, okay. be yeah. Maybe if you can just drop your contact too. Yeah, yeah. I'll put Thanks. I'll put my um phone number. Okay, ah. I just dropped mine. In, I just dropped mine in the chat there too. Um, as well. So yeah, this okay. is and this is for this is for Maui, Kevin. I don't know if it makes a difference or not. Um, obviously the, the errors are split. Mostly, mostly the errors are on Oahu. So it probably doesn't make a difference. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mo- the guys I know are on, are on Oahu. So I can give you okay. their, their info. Yeah. That'd be great. At least it's a starting point. Yeah. Go get them, man. That that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rooting for you. And, uh, let me, I'll make a couple calls too. And then text you if, uh, I got anything. Okay. Awesome. Appreciate it. Are are you looking to uh, develop it or are you looking to uh, wholesale it? Um, I don't know. It's kind of tough. I'd probably just end up. It depends. I, you know, most of my business is just flipping. It's just mm-hmm. whole. It's just 
buying them and then reselling the chunks of vacant land. Again, um, one of them is a little bit larger, it's two acres. So possibility to like condominiumize it and then subdivide it. Um, neither, both of them are in Haiku. So they're part of that water restriction area. Like it's, they're never gonna get a water meter to them, mm -hmm. but there is enough rain in that area to where they can run water catchment off of them. Neighbors have water catchment. So hopefully that was, that was kind of the plan. Gotcha. And are you here? Alex in Hawaii or I'm in Maui. Yeah. You're in Maui. Okay. Awesome. Do you wholesale just land too? You just look for land or are you, mm, you wholesale? not so much? My, my main business is based out of Arizona. So my gotcha. primary, my primary land business is based out of Arizona where we do um, a lot of flips and we don't do a lot of wholesales because we're actually closing on the properties ourselves, And then we do a good amount of minor subdivides, taking 40 acres, breaking down to a couple tens and then reselling them. Um, so we typically close on the properties, do some paper improvements, and then sell them. Love it. Yeah. Well, you guys provide a lot of value because even, you know, improving the paper is like a lot of work, like how you're doing now, right? Like clearing up title. <clears throat> and, yeah. Uh, so um, we're in Arizona because we've been going back and forth to Scottsdale and kind of getting to okay. know the market. And it's it's a it's a it's a competitive market yeah, out there. It is. Yeah. We've been working around like kind of greater Phoenix area. So not actually mm -hmm. in Phoenix, but like once mm -hmm. you get like 30, 45 minutes outside, outside of Maricopa city has been really good for us. Um, and then Northern Arizona too, everything that's like two or three hours North of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause Phoenix is like hot. It's like yeah. in the Valley. Everybody calls it the Valley. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. then it's, but as soon as you start going North, you get up like three, four 5,000 feet in elevation real quick. And so that's where everybody likes to let go during the summertime. Mm. Um, so we've bought, and so that's where a lot of my business is, is, is up there and just like vacant land. A lot of it doesn't have utilities on it. It's this um, something for somebody to like kind of get away to on the weekend. Nice. Well, I'm assuming you have buyers kind of at the ready then, right? Or uh, yes and no. To... I mean, we, we, we have a buyer's list, but at the same time, we're still, all these things go to end consumers. So it's pretty rare that somebody's buying multiple properties from us. Mm -hmm. So they still go on, you know, we use like flat fee MLS or we partner with realtors on them. Um, we pay for like our own land.com subscription, do a lot of Facebook marketing. If I had to guess, the permitting process must be pretty efficient out there then. Is that right? Would you say so? Yeah, like so for us to do a minor subdivide of taking taking a 40 acre piece and going to four 10 acre pieces, mm -hmm. once it takes like one to three months to get a survey done, which is about the that's really just the lead time of how backed up the surveyor is. Mm -hmm. And then after that, getting it into the county to actually get split because we're working in what's considered an exempt subdivide, meaning that it's like over a certain acreage amount or under a mm -hmm. certain number of splits that can go to the county in 30 days or less and then so what like, about like permits for to, to to build um we don't really pull we hardly don't we don't really pull any permits but still not i mean like four to six months something like yeah. that on the on the long for a long complicated permit yeah i would yeah that's i mean it's still better than honolulu county <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's kind of a lot. I, I was asking because if you're going to, if you're, if there's a lot of buyers for raw land and even retail buyers, I was thinking, I wonder if the permit process is, is pretty easy and efficient and quick. Um, cause otherwise like it's usually developers who got to build and then sell to the retail buyer. Yeah. My, you know, and that's the thing. And I've never truly pulled a hold that sort of a building permit on it. So I can't talk mm -hmm. a lot of experience gotcha. on that side, but it's, I mean, it's pretty quick and yeah, the, the process yeah. is significantly easier. Yeah. We've nice. considered, you know, we've considered taking some of our pieces of vacant land that have double wide manufactured homes around them and dropping one on there, but mm -hmm. end up it's, you know, you kind of have to get into a large enough that it's worth like the juice is worth it on mm -hmm. those versus it's normally worth it to just sell it for us and then just turn around and try to do it again. Yeah. Well, what, and I'm just curious because uh, we're kind of, we have partners in Scottsdale. We've been kind of flying in and out and, and watching the market, but like, how is the market over there? Is it, 
moving? Yeah, on the on the you know the land side, we've really seen most of our land sales have moved to seller financed. Before we we're selling like maybe well, I think like twenty two we we're selling like forty percent seller finance. Twenty three we're like sixty percent seller finance this year. It's like it's like seventy ish percent seller finance. So definitely the amount of seller financed properties are significantly going up. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Well, I guess so. When you say seller finance, you mean you're you're selling the land to the to the new buyer seller finance, or yeah, you're, yeah, okay, or you're yeah. buying the so land seller finance. We're typically we're typically buying cash, and then we're selling seller finance. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. How much yeah. is the land out there? Um, I mean, like cheap, a, uh, well, it. I guess it's relative. Our our note portfolio is anywhere from like 10 or $20,000 notes. And then we have a couple that are up in the hundred to $200,000 notes. Wow. So depends on how much acreage you want. Right. Some of the, some of the stuff that's around Phoenix is selling for like, uh, somewhere in like the 12 to 15,000 an acre. But then the stuff that's like way up North is selling for like a thousand dollars an acre. So there's a, there's a huge difference depending on location. Even in Phoenix, you can buy land for $12,000 acres. An acre. An acre. an acre, yeah, twelve thousand uh -huh. an acre. So yeah, twelve or fifteen thousand an acre. Um, now this is this isn't Phoenix. This is like forty five minutes outside of Phoenix. Just to be gotcha. like, yeah. just to be clear, so it's yeah, a little yeah, further yeah. outside. That makes yeah. sense. Once you get closer to Phoenix, you know stuff starts going Let's up. Say, well, 20, 20, 20, 30 thousand an acre. But that's still if yeah. you're then if you can buy it for twenty thousand and push it for twenty six or twenty eight thousand an acre after we add those paper improvements to it. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. then it makes sense for us. Right. Wow. Huh. You just don't get used to the numbers in that sense. Because like you can't even buy a parking stall here in Hawaii for that much. You could probably buy three three of those acre lots, maybe for a, a, a stall in Waikiki for the same price of a stall in Waikiki. It's crazy. Right. It's so funky working both Hawaii and Arizona yeah, because like here it's like Here's like this little, like the stuff I'm looking at is like three, four, five hundred thousand per per one acre. And the stuff out there is twenty thousand per acre. So it's like, I don't know, add a zero. The rental property that I bought here at the beginning of the year was like nine seventy five. That same thing out there for the same number of bedrooms and bathrooms would be like four seventy five, five seventy five. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, man, congratulations. I was like, I know you've been doing this for a while too, because you, uh, you came on and we were talking about it like a, a while ago i think so nice. yeah awesome man um hopefully yeah, so anybody can... send me anything probate related that's where that's my current um <laughs> current hurdle that we're trying to overcome yeah right on alex well okay. yeah best of luck hopefully you can update us too if you're able to absolutely that would be a nice case study to kind of pick apart you know and, and, sure. and show like, that's how you take down deals you know you kind of got to be the guy that's the most resilient <laughs> sometimes so. yeah because you know even getting a hold of these people it's like oh. this is pretty simple geo scraping on the county website and then the number of calls that we made is probably like to get a hold of each one of the, these two parcels that were found was like somewhere between like six and 15 different phone numbers that we're trying and different people that we're trying so it's not like it's like do you just pull it through direct skip or batch skip and you call the first oh. number and they answer it's like there's a lot of disconnected phone numbers so that's my yep. other encouragement is like, don't give up if you can't get a hold of a person right away. Yeah. You know, we've sent like handwritten letters to people or we've sent like, like for Arizona, we send like Mac nuts to people, like just like cheesy Hawaii stuff to make it like, Hey, we're, we're like super interested in this thing. And you never know what's going to get somebody to call you back. Yeah, absolutely. I even, I've mailed the neighbors before just handwritten letters to say, Hey, do you, by any chance, do you know uh, how to get in touch with the, your neighbor's property, you know, we're interested in buying it or something, you know, and, and I got the best response from that. Cause like a lot of times the neighbors hate the fact that the house, their house next door is like, you know, like, and that house, mm -hmm. it was like in tear down condition. So like the shingles from the roof would fly over to the neighbor's pool all the time. And I could tell too, cause I could see it through the, you know, I could see his shingles in the other guy's yard. So I was like, I'm gonna mail that guy. <laughs> you know, like, and he called me back. So, but there you go. Find the, the owner and I, I think the city ended up condemning it. It was off of, mm. you know, I, I think in, in Hoi Kai, 
So, um, hey, you got to get creative when you're trying to find these people. That's, yep. you know, that if they're easy to find, then probably some other investors already found them and talked to them. But if they're not easy to find or there's some, there's some issues with the title and the paperwork, then there's yep. definitely work there. Yeah, you definitely got to dig for the gold for sure in this business. <laughs> and yeah. have patience right absolutely well, cool thanks, oh, thanks for sharing alex appreciate it man hey. learned a lot absolutely yeah good luck with that one too <laughs> thanks oh, let me check the chat oh right on kevin kevin dropped another name you can always try um kevin if, if you're able to 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 talk um have you been going down to the auctions um, yeah, I still go to the foreclosure options and um, there's not a whole lot going on, but people are still getting good deals here and there. Yeah. Um, has, so it's been slow then. Yeah, pretty, pretty slow. I think the backlog, the attorneys are telling me there, there was a big backlog from COVID, but oh. maybe another year, half a year to a year to. To your, till we're going to see all of those, I guess. It's taking a long time for the paperwork to get cleared, I guess, so they can actually do the foreclosure. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. So there's still people getting deals there, though, right? I mean. Yeah, it's kind of kind of the same people are still there, like a handful of guys. And then uh, there's a bunch of new guys. I think because um, it's so hard to find deals, so mm -hmm. there's new guys looking at the foreclosures. But yeah, still you can get good deals here and there. Nice. Are are you in any right now, Kev? Or are you waiting? Uh, I got I got one condo recently, but oh, um, nice. kind of conservative, so I don't really. I only got one this year. Yeah. Do you know what building is it? Was it in? It was in um Olawai Plaza. Oh, okay. Up at the end of Aloha University and Kapilani. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking in, at an off-market one near there. Oh, actually, I don't know where that one is on Aloha, but um, this one's kind of more in the front. It's in the Kioniana. Does anybody have any experience in, in the Kioniana building? This is in Hawaii. I think that one's in Waikiki. Yeah, it's in Waikiki. Yep. Yeah, the one the one I got on the other side of Alawai. But the Kioniana is good. I've looked oh, yeah? at Yeah, I, I've looked at a lot in there. Really? Okay. How uh, what were you looking at it for? Like buy fix sell or buy fix refi? Uh, buy fix and sell. I kind of so. yeah, I had a lot of rentals like condos and townhouses, but in Hawaii the returns so bad, so I I usually end up just selling it after a while. Yeah, the returns are it's hard, it's hard to cash flow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that. Is that building uh do they allow short term rental? No. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't yeah, I'm pretty sure they can't, but I mean yeah. it's a good nice building. It's kind of old, but they keep it up well. Okay. You, you think are because like that's one thing we learned, like Layla and I is if you're going to flip a condo, condos are great because you don't have to worry about, uh, uh, most of the time, you don't have to worry about the major systems of the property, right? Like foundation, roof, plumbing, like the 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 main plumbing is handled, you know, through the building. And, but, so really you're just renovating inside of the box and no landscaping, exterior paint. So you save a lot of headaches, right? But you do, we learned we have to check with the building because the building could be a deal killer. Like if they have, if, if they're really, if they have rules that, you know, aren't going to be, uh, it's going to slow us down and cause us problems like that. We've lost like months because of building stuff. Yeah, Layla. I think it was, uh, what building was that? 1350 wasn't too bad. 1350 Alamana, that wasn't too bad. Um, some of, some, some buildings are hard to work with though. Thanks, Kev, for giving us an update. Oh, yeah, no problem. But you don't have any projects going on right now? Um, I just, yeah, I don't really have anything now. I kind of haven't done much. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of waiting around. 
Yeah, it's it's been weird the last four years, actually. If you think about it, <clears throat> if you haven't, like a lot of the investors, because even for me, this is my 13th year and I've never been through a crash, you know? It just shows how long we've been on a bull run. Like started in 2011, so I saw the bottom and I, I saw what a recession looks like. I was door knocking during that time. And, uh, but even if you're an investor that came in in like 2019 or even 2020, right? It's like, it's almost like you've seen like two full market cycles. <laughs> so even like, you know, if the investors that came in only like five years ago, if they're still, you know, here, they got to taste little different markets. Cause in it, when COVID happened, it was a sharp turn down. Nobody knew whether or not, you know, the world was going to end. And, um, so the market just kind of crashed in, in our space. <clears throat> and, but then we took the ride up in 2021, all the way until they started raising rates. Right. So that, um, then things started to slow down. It's almost like we've seen the, the cycle turn. Um, and I think honestly, when, when they start dropping rates again, if they do, um, we might see it again, start to go up even more. I don't see how it doesn't, unless I'm missing something. But I did miss something in Vegas, and that was the home builders. I didn't understand that they could hold that much power um, with having the buy downs that they're the incentives that they were giving. So that kind of held the the Vegas market plus the lack of inventory. So uh, I've learned so much in the last four years that I feel even if I haven't been through, you know, a steep a, a recession um, in the housing market that when it comes, um, I think many of us may be well seasoned by then, <laughs> hopefully battle tested but does anybody else have anything leads needs good deeds any deals on the line we got sam liz jody jeremy sue sunday i'm looking at um that unit so hopefully uh if i can get it under contract it will have a nice case study we haven't done a deal analysis in a while so those are always fun. <laughs> Leila, are we going to do this one or no? We'll see. We'll sell them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Leila's tired. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> we just, uh, we had five houses left from just years ago. These are development projects and it was just when we sold our last one in Makaha it was just it was a different feeling I wasn't expecting it um because those are like the headache projects you know the ones that all right well thank god for the bump we got in 2021 you know because okay. we still make all right <laughs> given like how long it took but it just showed like that this the the amount of appreciation that happened in 2021 was just outstanding. Like we gained like $200,000 worth of equity in each house. And we had like five left or yeah, around there. So that shows how powerful the market can be in your favor or against you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been quite the journey and, you know, Layla and I have been, we're exhausted, but you know, you see a deal for me, anyways, it's hard to say no. Uh, <laughs> it's just hard to say no. It's just what we do. And um, I'm here picking it apart, every little thing. Yeah. Layla's finding all the reasons why we shouldn't do it, which is good. Like, we need that. <laughs> 390 avail uh, units on the market in Waikiki right now. 390? What is the average? I don't know. Average per what? Average amount of listings in in that area. I want to. Oh, that's what I'm seeing. Three, just Waikiki, three hundred and ninety. Mm. I'm thinking we should probably check. 
I mean, in the that, concert's solid. Five. What was that? In that building, there's five. Five listings, yeah. Yeah, Kevin was saying that the building is well run. It seems so. That's good. Yeah. Thanks. I think we, hopefully at the price that we can get it at, maybe we can cash flow. I don't think so, actually, because the maintenance fee is like $1,200 a oh, month. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, Where did that lead come from, Corey? Uh, this one came from a realtor who was in contract with her buyer. <clears throat> and I think the financing fell through. So um, she called me and I, I looked at it. I ran the numbers and it was just about 50 grand too high. So I just let her know. Unfortunately, like I, I don't want to offend nobody, you know, so, but at four, you know, at, at, at maybe like 400, it would work. Uh, but we'll see. Cause uh, it sounds like they're in there. There's enough interest that they mailed the key, the, the owner mailed the keys for us to go look at it. So um, mm. uh, I think, and I don't know, maybe Kevin, if you can, you know, if, if these numbers sound right to you, but I'm hoping, you know, if everything goes right, maybe buy for four, put about 80 to a hundred, if that into it, it's only a condo, but um, it's fully gutted. So uh, everything's got to go in. I'm guessing it's only 800 something square feet. So it may be 80 to a hundred. Um, so I'm all in maybe around five and ARV. I saw a recent one sold for about 640 on a lower floor too. So does that sound right, Kev, to you? Or am yeah, I looking I think, at the building? <laughs> yeah, I don't I just don't know about the sales price, but I think one of my buddies did one in there. I forget what his numbers were, but I think he was saying he um it took him a long time to sell, but this was about six months ago. That's another thing I noticed. The holding times look a little long out there, like maybe average 60 to 90 days. Yeah, I think you just got to put it on the market and wait and, yeah. you know, wait for the buyer to get your number. But, yeah, it's kind of a, yeah, not a whole lot of buyers around, it seems. Especially now, yeah. Yeah, because at a high interest rate, people mm -hmm. are not really that, not a whole lot of people and they're not really excited. That's I what guess. it feels like. It feels like the like COVID and interest rate hikes or the interest rate hikes kind of took the win from the sales of a lot of investors. Yeah. I honestly think a lot of investors bought during 2021 when interest rates were dirt cheap and they were getting bid up and you know, supply chain issues. So I we see on our side you know, across the nation, just it was the backlog, you know, so I think people got into skinny deals in 2021, had to battle inflation and, and supply chain issues and backlog. And then now it, in 2022, especially when the rates were starting to go up, it's kind of like, okay, let's clean up the mess. And then 2023 is almost like, let's take a break. <laughs> and, and then now hopefully we're starting to, I mean, I can almost feel the market coming back. You know, we went into contract pretty quick on all four of our houses out in Makaha, although we did price aggressive. <laughs> so I think, you know, I, the market has been, as that's what I feel, it's coming back. It's definitely not like it was when it was, you know, white hot. Um, but I, I think overall, shoot, we kind of made it out of COVID all right so far. Although there's a lot of consumer debt still. So there's a lot of variables that still need to be played out. And like these foreclosures too that you're saying, Kev. And I'm wondering if that's the same in Washington, you know, with you, Ben, and Alex. So I bet it is. I bet it's not just Hawaii. Um, that forbearance thing was, I mean, there's a lot of people going into forbearance during COVID, right? So uh, whatever happened to that? the shadow inventory and all that stuff they were talking about. I don't know, but anybody got anything? That's it. 
Okay. Um, maybe I got, so for us, we're, um, we're, my, our main focus is to Keiko Capital. It's hard enough, you know, it's, it's hard enough to have one company and, you know, look after it and give your life to it and watch it grow and succeed. So, but we're still at heart investors, you know, and back in 2019, I had to tell people I'm not buying anymore. Like that's way too much stuff. I got to clear the slate. Now, fast forward, you know, oh crap, five years later. And the the slate is pretty much clear all but one of our houses. Although Elena and I just bought in on six more <laughs> with Vernon on the West side. So we like, we love pain. And <laughs> well, I guess what I'm saying is that we're still, in, you know, investors and I, I'm, we're back out shopping now. So if, if you guys need gap funding, perhaps I, I'm not going to promise that we'll, we'll lend on it, but if it's a good deal, you know, we'll, you know, let, let's take a look at it and uh, perhaps we can, you know, we got money to move. And if we don't move it, then it's going to bleed us a lot. And Right now, our investors don't want their money back, so which is a great, great problem. And I'm honored, you know, I'm proud of that too. But at the same time, like it is a problem when you're holding too much cash, especially when that cash is expensive, right? So let's do some deals. <laughs> Kev, let me know what you got at the auction. Alex, land, you know, like <laughs> so. No, nah, I, I, I just want to put that out there. Um, cause for years I haven't been putting out there that we were buying cause we weren't. And, uh, but now we're not going to buy as crazy as we did before. Cause, uh, we got, you know, obligations in it now, but if, if it makes sense, we're, we'll jump in. You guys need private money. We'll, we'll we can fund in the gap. So don't forget about us. <laughs> you guys looking for like short-term quick flips then, or you want long-term depreciation style plays? I'd say under 12 months, hopefully. Um, okay. It, like the, the longer it's going to take, hopefully the more meat on the bone there is uh, for it to make sense a as an annualized return. Um, yeah. Uh, and especially, and, and this works the same too. If it's a low dollar amount, like, you know, 20,000 for a piece of land, then um, we can work something out there too. It doesn't have to be, all slam dunk big deals you know we can take base hits and sometimes those are are the home runs right the ones yeah. you think are going to be small like they surprise you sometimes yeah something i've actually started doing with my this might interest you or not but we started taking our note portfolio and actually starting to sell off some of our note portfolio or trying to like the fancy word is hypothecate against it right mm -hmm. lend against it yep. um and so we've been trying to, we've been starting to raise some money at like anywhere from like 13 to 15% against that note portfolio, against current properties that are sold to an end buyer, you're buying a discounted note. And then that is either paying that, paying you out over the course of that. Have you ever leveraged that with, with like an institution at all or no? Is it too, no, too small? No, I've never, you know, it shows up on the balance sheet. So like if we're trying to get a balance sheet, if we're trying to get a, a loan on a piece of land then that can be used as like a balance sheet style loan, but we haven't actually ever really utilized it from that or tried to get them to lend against it on it. So that might be something that's worth and worth looking into too, is to will a bigger institution lend a line of credit against a, a against a note portfolio. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly kind of what the guys in our space do. Like they, they'll leverage their cash. They'll leverage their, uh, the book that they're holding onto the notes that they're holding onto. So it's, uh, that's a very smart play actually. Let's, I will take a look at that. Like let's, you guys, let's set up a call you, or something. You guys can like, you're like Kiko is getting bigger banks like Chase or JP or, um, Wells Fargo yeah. to lend so against we have that partners. Then. Yeah, that that they'll fund us at the table. We work off of a line of credit with them. Mm -hmm. So, Berkeley, Berkeley, I'm on a. Sorry, guys. Um, but I would love to talk to you about that, Alex, and and see because like uh, 
I mean, the guys that in our space that do it, they do it on a large scale. So like, and, and really they securitize a lot of their loans. Um, but I'm, they, a lot of them too leverage to get lines of credits, like large lines of credits with the JP Morgan, you know, and uh, Goldman Sachs, those guys. Yeah. yeah. Where you're the lines of credit are tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But there yeah. are guys who are down the line that, that will leverage. And then there's, there's family offices too, but I haven't really gotten into that space. I, I really think that that's where we should be though, is in the, in the conversation with the family office money. Um, does everybody know what a family office is roughly like, so a family, cause I, I didn't know at first, um, the family office is basically, it could, it's a kind of a broad term, but, um, there's usually one or two, or maybe a family, um, of ultra high net worth individuals who they have, they hire maybe a manager, a fund manager to create a, a family office fund to basically get a return on their extra money that's lying around. Right. So typically it could be a little bit more flexible um, because you're dealing directly with the, the money and they're not held to guidelines. And um, a lot of them are just looking to get a return. You know, they're not trying to like sell, sell notes, to recapitalize and 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 run it so much as, I mean, it's run like a business because it is one, but the intent is just to get a return for the principals, right? So maybe there's a there's a lot of family office money in Arizona, Phoenix, Scott. There's a lot of money out there, yeah. So and those family offices typically play with a little bit bigger dollar amount than the average person too. You know, they're somewhere in like the five to thirty or forty million dollar range. Yeah. So yeah, bigger than what bigger than I can for? play with, but. Just, like, I mean, small, a couple hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Rel well, relatively I mean, relatively small, because that's what the portfolio that I'd be willing to sell off is. So, And there's also actually another good website out there called Paper Stack. And I started listing some of my notes for sale in there to sell the, sell the paper. That's what I was going to ask you. So there actually is a marketplace for these, for like, I guess, smaller loans or... Do yeah, they sell absolutely. second position loans? And um, I think they're mostly that. Well, I'm pretty sure you can list anything. So like on paper stack, P-A-P-E-R-S-T-A-C, you can list anything that you want to on there, whether it's first position, second position, contract for deed, um, mortgages, like deed of trust. It, it just, you just check whatever box you got. Um, and then it's a mix of whether it's a, like a, single family multi-family house land so there's but there's a good amount of people who sell land on there specifically and like that annual yield a lot of these get listed at is somewhere between like 12 and 17 to 20 percent meaning like oh. annual yield meaning like their annual if you put in a dollar you're going to get 17 cents back like you're going to get 70 17 percent roi per year on that um and so that's kind of been and there's varying sizes of notes in there. And a lot of them are, are smaller sub hundred K. That's kind of fun to, to bounce around on there because there's plenty of people who don't want to get into the actual flipping investing side, but are willing to do a little bit more work yep. and are looking for something that they can get in the 12, 13, 15% loan size. And then if the loan goes belly up, they're into these loans for 70 cents on the dollar. So they can, there's enough room for them to foreclose on them take them back, put them back in the market, make all their money back plus some. How have I never heard of this website? This is awesome. I'm looking at it. Yeah, it's maybe been around not too long, two years now, two and a half years. Gotcha. Nice. Is there any properties in Hawaii that you've been looking at on here? I haven't, you know, I actually haven't looked. Or Vegas. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm going sure to geek out on that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. <laughs> and did you, did you, have you sold and bought notes on this? Um, I have one listed for sale in there right now. And then I'm going to be listing a couple other ones. Wow. Okay. You know what? This is a, I've been waiting for a platform like this. I always thought like, yeah, because why couldn't 
someone trade the notes that we have directly? Why, why can't we have like a platform? Well, one, you have to create it and then you have to build, bring the community. Right. So it looks like these guys started to make a lot of leeway leeway. Who's behind this. Do you know? I don't, I don't know who's actually behind it, um, but I have other friends who have used it. So the, the cool thing there is on paper stack, they're the ones that create all of the actual paper, the paperwork that transfers that note mm -hmm. from one person to the next. So like, they're like, it's not just like, okay, Corey and I start talking and then we have to figure it out with some attorney offline, mm -hmm. like that their website kind of does it all. They create that new paperwork that changes it from, Corey's name to my name or vice versa and then and then trades all like changes all the account information and you set the pay information so so they wow. kind of build it all in there and then they take it takes some sort of fee I think it's something like 500 ish dollars um oh. I think it's more of a flat fee than a percentage of the loan but I haven't I haven't gotten that far on it but I have other friends who have sold multiple loans on here um the ones that sell really quick for land wise are the ones that are producing that are somewhere between like 18 and 19% yield mm -hmm. the ones. And then I don't know on the other side of um, like the single family, cause single family is a little bit more of a secured asset. So maybe people are willing to buy those at a lower 12 or 13%. Right. Wow. Well, so who's listing these? Is it the, is it banks? No, it's like, like me. People? Yeah, well, it's okay. people who have it's people who have done seller finance deals. These are private notes. Yeah, yeah, these are all private notes. Well, yeah, that's my understanding. Is these are all private notes. Gotcha. Because uh, you'll see, they're all they're all pretty low dollar. I mean, right? You're not buying a portfolio of five million on here. They're yeah. all a, a hundred, couple hundred thousand dollars. I'd say majority are between 30 and 70,000. Yeah. Yeah. It's all smaller amounts. Huh? Is there any kind of like, um, templated, um, note documents that they would prefer you use, or is it whatever note you drafted, mm -hmm. the buyer just has to be okay with it. It's whatever. I, I believe that it's, it's already whatever note, is in place with the buyer and then all they're doing is they're just doing paperwork in order to change the ownership of that note mm -hmm. so they're not they're not creating the original note they're just changing the ownership of who has that first lien position going from alex having the first lien position to transferring paperwork to corey now having that first lien position so on the buyer's end they're or sorry the person who's actually like bought that property and is paying for that property every month they only will get notified saying, hey, we've switched, you know, your note's been sold to so-and-so. This is going to be your new um, servicing company. Everything on their end with their, um, like, terms and agreement stays the same. Do you get to review the in-place notes when you're purchasing the note? Yep. Okay. Looks yeah, like, like you, have to, you have to provide all that documentation. I would, I would think um, right yeah do they service it they do they disperse the pay the, the pay? i don't no not not that i know of so you have to use a third-party servicing company like gotcha. madison management or you know the i use pioneer title agency does a lot of my note servicing hmm. wow thanks yeah this is interesting i already see one over here in henderson Oh, 89,000. So 89,000 or best offer, meaning that you can, you buy the note for 89. It's paying a 5%. It's a performing second. Oh, wait a second. Maybe if I can show my screen. Um, Let me transfer your host. Oh, you're a co-host there. You should be good. Uh, share screen. Sorry, guys. One second. I forget how to share screen. How do I do this? Uh, it's in the bar. It should be at the bottom of the page. Screen and a square with an arrow. Yeah. Oh, it's right there. Okay. Put this one up here.
Yeah, I see it. I know that like getting into notes, like buying notes is another way people are moving in as far as investing instead of doing actual projects. Are you guys seeing my screen? Yes. Yep. So the, this one here, Alex, if we're looking at this performing second, 128.9 UPB. Unpaid principal balance at 5%, meaning that it's a 5% interest rate on $128,000. Gotcha. And then the next line right there, the yield that's in bold is 8.73. That's what the annual return would be. Um, so that's why your the loan is worth $128,900, but they want to sell the note for only $89,000. So they need, so you need to give a reduced face value on the loan in order to get a higher yield amount. Yeah. So they're going to take a loss then. Yeah. Um, if they're going to no, sell the well, loan for 89, if they're willing to sell it for 89 or 88. Yeah. But they put the, the real no value is 128. Aren't they going to lose? But you don't. No, because you don't know what they're into the note for. Oh, true. You, you don't know what they're actually into that property for. So it could be more so, or less. <clears throat> yeah. So like, so they, if it's listed for $88,000, they could have, um, this is kind of funky. It's a second, well, it's a second lien with a balloon on it. Um, so they could have already had this paying for a, a significant amount of time or uh, I mean this is interesting I'll probably spend a lot of time on this it's like, is there deals here that one doesn't yeah because look at I mean some of the other ones are looking at a yield of 12 13 percent yeah oh. thanks for sharing this man yeah thank you hey absolutely so that's where so I started listing some notes on here in order to, to raise capital because what we can do is it's easier for us to sell properties on seller finance. And yeah. so if we can sell it on seller finance, then we create this other asset that's a piece of paper. And then we can take that piece of paper and then we can go and we can sell it on paper stack. Now we know that we're going to take like between a 20 and 30% hit on the face value of the loan. But yeah. if I'm into a property for $100,000, I sell it for or fifty thousand dollars. I sell it for a hundred thousand dollars. Get twenty percent down. That's an eighty thousand dollar loan, and we're going to take like a say we're only going to sell the loan for sixty five thousand dollars. Still sixty five thousand plus that twenty thousand gives me a it gives me a faster exit, a yep. slightly lower amount, but it gets me gets that money recuperated. So I can it's almost like a flip, but it gives mm -hmm. that long-term stability to the end buyer and it's, it's all about what's well, all about is opening your buyer pool up right there, the amount of people who have a hundred thousand dollars cash versus the amount of people who have twenty thousand dollars plus a thousand dollars a month for the next 15 years is significantly larger so yeah. that's what we're trying to that's what we're trying to do that's awesome man well thank you for sharing again this is cool i'm glad that they have a platform like this i've been waiting for one like <laughs> is there any others I don't know. This is the only one that I know of. Yeah. Awesome. I know okay. there's no buyers out there, but you know, this is a cool platform where people it's up for grabs. Yeah, I mean, you can get a quick return for in slow buy-in. Um, yeah, I'm gonna look into it more. Um, Alex, I do you wholesale only in uh, Arizona or? Uh, some Hawaii stuff too. Okay. So, Nothing well, in Vegas though, yeah? No, just stick okay. to Arizona. The one, I just dropped a link in there for paper stack. That's the one, that, that's one, my notes that I actually have for sale on there. Oh, sweet. So, well, take a look. In case you're, in case you're curious to see what, like how I listed yeah. mine. Um, just anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, no, I just work Arizona and then Maui and the Maui is more 
I just picked up a long-term rental here at the beginning of the year. That's a three unit that we did some one unit we did like some heavy renovation on, and then the other ones were kind of ready to go already. So, nice. and then looking at doing more, more stuff here. I grew up here actually. So that's why slowly moving back into my own backyard is, it's just the zeros, right? There's a lot more zeros with yeah. everything here. Yep. Yep. And one thing about Hawaii is like, if you can do this in Hawaii, every other market's like, it's not as scary, right? <laughs> like Hawaii can get scary sometimes. Like, yeah, like, we've taken six figure losses, like multi six figure losses on projects before, you know, like it's so demoralizing um, sometimes, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, like it's so worth it. And then you look back, it's like, wow, th those are where all the great stories are come from, you know, like the nightmare projects and stuff, all the ones that you just wanted to be over with already. And then those are the ones you get to talk about later, though, the the, the war stories. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I've had to cut a fat check at closing when we're when we're the sellers before, you know, like that's when mm. you're getting a check. <laughs> so that's painful. Uh, yeah, we've touched all ends of the spectrum, like had big wins, big losses. And like one thing's for sure. If you can, when you start doing this consistently in Hawaii, every everywhere else doesn't seem as scary. <laughs> yeah, but dude, thanks for sharing, Alex. Appreciate it. I got a lot of value from that. <laughs> of course, I geek out on that site. <laughs> well, uh, does anybody else have anything? We're right on an hour already. Nothing planned. All right, guys. Well. If something comes up, we're always here. Doors are open, you know, and uh, we're rocking and rolling. So, and we're kind of cash heavy. So call us and we'd love to see if we can stitch something together. If you got something on the line and Alex, yeah, maybe I, I'll reach out to you. I'll maybe make sure I get your info. Oh yeah, I got, I got your number. Well, thank you guys for another Friday talk call, coffee talk call. <laughs> I think the next coffee talk will be officially five. No four years from when we started the call and really it was just to be check on our friends and see what they think is going to happen and stuff. And it just bled on to, to, you know, to this day where it's just talk story. Um, we might have plans in the future for, for doing something, um, something else, maybe a podcast or something, but we'll let everybody know. Um, but thank you guys. Hope you guys had a great week. Have a great rest of your weekend and uh, we'll see you guys next Friday. Hello, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Alex. See you. Thanks, Kev.